VMware Composer needs a database backend and um, you'll see my little virtual environment there I've got three boxes I'm going to put my um, SQL database on the domain controller which I know is frowned upon but it's on the internet network so here we go there are various uh, database platforms that are supported I'm going to install uh, 2008 R2 other ones are up on the screen there select installation and new installation Okay. Shift that up there a little. Okay, click next. Out there, end user license agreement. I agree to the terms and click next. and it will want to install the setup support files, let it do so it will do some pre-flight checks, you'll see there's a couple of warnings on there uh, down at the bottom you'll see it's complaining about the Windows firewall ok fair enough now as I'm behind the corporate firewall I'm going to use the sledgehammer and nut approach and simply disable the firewall obviously the correct way to do this will be to create an exception for your SQL instance in the firewall alright there's another warning on there essentially that's telling us that I'm installing SQL on a domain controller and that is frowned upon however this is my test network so I can live with that there's a habit of moving windows in different parts of the screen I do apologize next okay I am going to take all features just to annoy all the SQL types uh, I don't need all the features but I'm just going to install them anyway I could just install database services and the management studio if I wanted to, but I'm just going to take everything because I can. Next. Okay, click next. I'm going to use the default instance so it'll be MS SQL Server where's that instance ID click next yep obviously there's not a lot of room on this server because it's just a little test server so okay what account are each of the services going to run under uh, I am going to set each account to run under the system account each service to run under the system account and I'm going to set the startup type for the server agent to oh my. you could if you wanted to put the domain admin in the top there and click use the same account and it would pre-populate all that stuff for you or if you've got a SQL admin Windows account you can put that in there ok methods of authentication uh, Composer is going to require mixed mode authentication so we're going to need to change it from the default as soon as you enable 
for that it's going to want an SA password. Now this must be a complex password, if you put a simple one in it will complain. And you will notice at the bottom there that it's already added in my current Windows logged on. I'm logged on to domain admin as a SQL Server Administrator. Add any other accounts in there if you so wish. Click Next. Account provisioning. I'm not using um, analysis services, but if you wanted to, you can just click Add Current User and click Next. Okay, I'm going to leave it on the default. I've sped it up for the purpose of the video. If only I installed this quickly. I'll be well. It should come up and tell you that your SQL Server installation has completed successfully. Click close and we can jump out of the installation center. Close all this lot down. Now we're going to want to get into the SQL Management Studio. So just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to drop a shortcut for the Management Studio on the desktop of this server. There it is. Let's open that up then. Now I need to authenticate so I can get in. The server name I'm just going to put localhost. And it will connect with my login credentials, which if you remember is a SQL administrator. Over the left hand side, up at the top there, let's just shift things about so we can see what we're doing. We're going to create a new database. Simply right click databases and select new database. I'm going to give this database the name of View5. Don't know what it is, it's for Composer. I click on the Options tab and change the recovery mode from full to simple. As far as the database is concerned, that's all you need to do. Now what I don't want to do is put the SA password in all the ODBC connections, so I'm just going to create a user. Again, just so I know what it is, I'm going to call this user view 5 I'm going to change to uh, SQL Server Authentication. Give this user a password. I'll take note of this username or password because we're going to be using it in a minute. Untick the box that says Enforce Password Expiration. then over on the left hand side select user mapping locate the database that we created earlier which is view 5 and down at the bottom 
I'm going to add in the role of database owner to my view 5. You can do what he wants with that database. And those are the credentials that we're going to use when we set up our ODB connection. Right, I'm finished on me to make a drawer. Now I'm going to jump across onto my virtual center server where Composer needs to be installed. So then the install requirements for Composer are the same as they are for Virtual Center. But I need my Virtual Center server to be able to talk to this database. So, start administrative tools, data sources, ODBC. Now you can do this as part of the Composer setup, which you will see in a minute, but I prefer to do it manually beforehand. We want to create a system DSN. Select Add and you want a SQL Server Native Client. If you click Finish, it will want to configure it. Let's give the ODPC connection a name. We've called everything else View 5, so... Description. You put whatever you want in it. Now, which server is the database on? If you remember, mine is on my domain controller, so I'll just fill in the name of my domain controller, click Next. Uh, we're going to want to authenticate with SQL Server Authentication. I remember the user that we created earlier on, it's called View5. And we set a password for him when we created him in the SQL Management Studio. Next. Now we'll want to uh, default to the master database, so we're going to need to change that. And on the drop down, select our View 5 database. Next. Leave everything else on the defaults. Click Finish. And you see there's a button on the bottom there, so we can test just to make sure that it works and it should come back as test completed successfully. So we have a system DSN set up as an ODBC connection on our virtual center server. Installing Composer is relatively simple. As I said earlier, it has to be installed on the virtual center server. Run the installer. At the bottom screen, click Next. Next. Accept the end-user license agreement. Next. Next. Now, I could hit the ODBC DSN setup button there and do what we did earlier, create it, but I know what all the settings are, so I'm just going to fill them in here. The name was View5, the username's View5, and the password is the one we created earlier. Hit next. Next. Install. There we go, can't get much simpler than that. Click finish. Now Composer is installed on my virtual center server. I don't need the setup files anymore, I'll just delete them. That's just finished on the virtual center server. Now we need to go into um, View Administrator, which lives on my connection server, or I can simply open a, a web browser window and, and navigate to it. Now I already have, if you've been watching the early videos, uh, the um, virtual center server listed in View Administrator. But what I don't have it do is enabled for Composer. So if we log in and expand View Configuration, Servers, hopefully after a couple of seconds you'll see my virtual center server because I added it in earlier. So I'm going to select it and edit it and I'm going to enable Composer. If you shift that over to one side so we can see both screens. Simply tick 
the Enable View Composer because now we've got it installed. Select Add and enter your domain name, username and password. I'm using the domain admin but essentially somebody who is a member of our view administrators group we created earlier. Click OK and that will whir away. Now the way that you will know that it has worked is if you keep an eye on the icon for the virtual centre server which I'm highlighting there you'll see it suddenly changes. I've got a gold box around it that means that it's a virtual centre server and it has Composer enabled. That's Composer installed so you can now deploy pools that utilise link clones. And we'll finish with that. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to come and visit us at www.peaknetlife.com.